But here's the deal. There's four things, and I talk about, and this works for me. This isn't for everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to the cabin. I'm still on vacation. It's actually the same day as the last video, but you'd never know that because it's two days after for you, and I changed my clothes. <laughs> Then look, there's all the stuff I packed up. <laughs> I meant to mention something last time because I'm on vacation here. And I'm never afraid to keep the store open on vacation. In other words, people can buy. It just shows them that, hey, you know, it's not going to be shipped till whatever date. And I usually go on and send them a message. I'm like, hey, just want to make sure you saw it. I'm not shipping till whenever. If you want me to cancel, I'll cancel. 99% of the time, nobody cancels. I have had it happen before, but it's always better to communicate. I'm not afraid to leave the store. A lot of people are afraid to do that because they're like, oh, people know I'm not home and whatever. I can't ever leave my house unattended. If you haven't noticed, I have 8 million critters running all over the place. Sophie needs constant attention. So do those chickens out there and all the cats. So we always have somebody come and stay at the house. So Commonwealth Grandpa and Grammy are taking care of the house this time and holding it down. So we appreciate that. And I wanted to talk, there's a, an item that, that kind of jogged my memory about something. And I wanted to, it was a question that was asked to me. And I wanted to talk about it little bit by little bit. But I'm not going to keep you hanging around and uh, clickbait you from this title. And we're going to talk about it right now really quick and then kind of reiterate it through the rest of the video. Somebody just asked about, you know, how do you get so many sales? Is it just because the YouTube show? Listen, I, I know it's hard to believe, but I would actually, I think I would actually have more sales. I know I would if I didn't do the eBay show or if I didn't do the YouTube show. And I know people like, they get mad at that. It's true. I wouldn't sell a lot of the same stuff. And I do get a lot of viewer sales, probably 20%. Uh, some days, 25%. Some days, 10%. You know, some days, not at all. It just depends on the day, but I would have so much more time in the day. Plus, I'd have a lot more of a necessity to do it because my very survival would depend on making those sales. You know, necessity is the mother of invention. And I actually would make more sales if I didn't do YouTube. But don't get me wrong, the YouTube is awesome. Your support is amazing. And all of that combined makes it more lucrative to do it this way. But I think that is the truth. But here's the deal. There's four things, and I talk about, and this works for me. This isn't for everybody, and I do a weird kind of eclectic picking, and I definitely, do, you know, I get most of my, 95% of my stuff I get from garage sales, and that's different than a lot of people. So take this with a grain of salt here. All right, I think for me, the most important thing is habit. Habit. We'll talk about it a little bit as the weeks go on, but I am very habitual, and I make sure that I do X, Y, and Z before I get to do the things that I want to do. And so I create habits. And it's usually listing habits and picture habits. And even when I don't want to do it, I just do it and I break through because it's something I do every day. Another thing is to stay in your own lane. You know, pick what you know. And I usually pick the same stuff. But at the same time, it goes to number three here. Expand the base a little bit. You've got to increase your knowledge. You've got to get outside of your base because you don't want to be missing those really good items. And it's a, a process of learning and I'm learning, I'm learning from y'all. You teach me all the time in those garage sale videos. But there's so much I didn't used to pick that I pick now. And there's a few things that I used to pick that I don't pick anymore because the other things are making more money. So why would I waste my time doing those? So we'll talk about that a little bit too. Last but not least, and this to me is important for a lot of people out there because a lot of people like to buy. And there's a lot more to it than just this. You got to learn shipping. I've got shipping videos. I got all kinds of stuff. But this is just the mindset kind of things that I like to think about in order to, to have some success here, at least in the eBay, uh, maybe not some of the other platforms. But I like, to, I like to tell people, you need to fall in love with the sale. I love the sale. That's why I don't mind shipping because I know I made the sale. This is like, this is how I'm going to get the money here. This is the culmination of the deal. Fall in love with the sale and stop falling in love so much with the buy and we all love that buy but don't just get completely enamored with that treasure hunt without taking care of the end game because if you do you're just gonna end up with a pile of stuff all right here's what i mean by learn more so i didn't used to pick up big bulky items because i just didn't want to deal with them and the new wave was one of the very first now i didn't part this one out but it was one of the very first items that i started parting out this and 
vacuum cleaners and Nordic tracks and mixers and all kinds of stuff that I started parting out and making money on and figured out that I could actually make more money. Let me put this back. Parting things out than I could when I was uh, selling them as a whole. And there's tons of items out there like that. I used to sell the dome for more than people were selling the entire new wave oven. That's not the case anymore because somebody's manufacturing a replacement part. But I used to do that years ago, like a decade ago. I don't know if it was a decade. I bet it was. It's been a long time. These happened to come from Commonwealth Grandpa's sale. And there were two. I didn't get as much as I thought I would. I thought I'd get around 100. And we ended up getting like 90, unfortunately, because they're new open box. But apparently this model's not. Some of them were higher. Some of them were lower. But whatever. I'm, I'm still happy. $72 profit after fees, after shipping, up to $413 bucks so far for Commonwealth Grandpa. All right, here's an item. I had to pull up my step stool over here. Because <laughs> it's up here. You see it often. Matter of fact, I just put it back here not too long ago because I used it when we went to the lake one day. Needed one just this big. So it's not this one. It's the one underneath it. But I got to get this one off first. Where am I going to put it here? Let me see. Put it right there. Go up and grab this one. The Igloo 6. It's like teal. I don't know. Is that teal, y'all? And it sold for $15 plus shipping. So there's not big money in these by any stretch of the imagination. But if I can pick them up for a buck, I figure they're good for, you know, $10, $11 profit most of the time. All right, this one covers two of my points I had earlier, which is pick what you know. I play golf, obviously. Well, I don't play much anymore. I used to play a bunch. Now I get like two, three times a year. But I used to play maybe 30, 40 times a year. I used to actually coach, was an assistant coach on a, on a golf team at my high school for a few years. And so I know golf clubs fairly well. I don't know everything about them, but I, I know enough to be dangerous for sure. I just don't happen to find a bunch of them around here. It's not a really wealthy area. But there are certain areas around here where there's golf courses and you can certainly find them. So I would highly suggest learning some clubs. I pulled this one earlier. This one sold, and it's in rough shape if you look at it. See all the scratching on there, and I didn't bother to clean it. I cleaned it, but just a wipe down. I didn't do any great detail. But uh, we're going to make like $40 profit on this. Sold for $62 plus shipping in fairly poor condition with the grip that needs replaced, and it's still sold, so I'm pretty happy with that one right there. And then a wedge sold as well. Wedges are always good. You know, you find a 5-iron, it's pretty hard sell. But if you find a pitching wedge... It's an easy sell for a lot of reasons, but people don't always use the same wedges as they do with the rest of their irons, so they're pretty particular. Another reason is people lose wedges because they're always around the green and they forget to pick them up, but you rarely lose a 5-iron because you're always right next to your bag. So not just knowing brands, but knowing different types, and this one was also in pretty rough shape. I think 36 maybe plus shipping? You can see the discoloration has been well used and it uh well, the grip's not too bad but the bottom needs fixed so this one right here is a Cle it's a black pearl here cleveland wedge so cg15 and it uh, sold for pretty good profit too i think i bought it for five bucks not bad at all here's an interesting one this was <laughs> given to me i was out doing some sales with some family out near raleigh and my aunt Lori just grabbed these two and was like, here, take these. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so I looked on the bottom and they said uh, made in England. And of course they're VWs right there. And I'm like, well, die cast VW. It's definitely going to sell. But they're Campbell Soup. So it's like the old uh, Andy Warhol stuff right there on the side. Except for it's not Andy Warhol. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they'll, they'll sell for something used. I mean, this, these things were made to be collectible. Uh, 100th anniversary of Campbell Soup or something like that. So I knew there wouldn't be huge value, but it was enough to list them. You know, really quick, five, six minutes into it, all in. $7 plus shipping, so eh, it's probably worth it. Thank you, Aunt Lori. Appreciate it. It's always good to expand the categories you know. I was I just missed the Yu-Gi-Oh phase, really the Pokemon phase, all that stuff. And so it's not really a part of me as far as, you know, this is vintage, this is my childhood. I'm like the WWF Hulk Hogan era, right? And so I don't naturally find this stuff out there because it interests me. I have to look for it. And these are Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I think 1997, which was the first year, and I picked them up. So here they are. I did a video on the Commonwealth Auction Channel for these because I didn't want to do the research. So, you know, 
it's, I don't know, I guess it's a cop-out. I'm telling you to learn new categories, and at the same time I'm saying, uh, I don't think I would, <laughs> I don't think I would do the research on them. But I know enough to know that I don't want to research a thousand different cards. I do know that one way to do it is to just type in Yu-Gi-Oh! 1997 and go into sold listings, highest priced first, and to see if you have any of those cards and look through them. So there's one way to do a little bit of research without having to look up each and every individual card. They weren't in pristine condition by any stretch. And I just decided, hey, I'm going to put a ton of them on a video. And I'm going to put that video into the eBay link and see what happens with an auction. I was hoping for around 100 bucks. Didn't quite get it. But I paid $10 for this box. And I sold it for $75 plus shipping. All right, I take it back. I sold it for 73 plus shipping. So it's still pretty nice profit. I'm sure if I would have taken my time and spent hours and days researching every card, I could have tripled that easily. But uh, somebody else is going to make money, and I'm going to get it out the door. And that's how I like to do it. I'm not going to ship it in this box, probably, if, <laughs> because it tells $10 for the box. But whatever. I don't know what we'll do with it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I like to auction stuff off like this. Learned a little bit. I've sold some yu gi -Oh cards in the past. And this is how I'm probably going to continue to do it. All right, I'm going to show you something. I have to walk around the corner here. Out of the Vermont bin, out of the Tupperware bin. You see me buy Tupperware all the time on the Commonwealth Picker channel. But it's not really always worth picking up Tupperware. I buy a ton of it. I know what sells on eBay. I know what does. Actually, it all sells on eBay if you list it right and group it and whatnot. But I know what's worth my time and what's not worth my time. I do think that a lot of people watch shows like this and they just buy, buy, buy. But a lot of it's not worth it. You'll notice what's in my bin here isn't that much. I pick certain Tupperware items to sell on eBay. I buy so much of it because it ends up in my antique booth and I make a few bucks on it. This is one of the winners here. And I like salt and pepper shakers, certain lids, ketchup bottles. The measuring cups are great as well. These are some old... Uh, really old like mixers here and they are this one's blue here there's two of them it's gonna go out first class and i sold one of these last show a bigger one and they're not even in great shape if these were in great shape they'd go for more than this but this is the kind of stuff i do like to buy you'll notice there's discoloration it's nothing amazing here but let me show you the numbers out the door here so this is what came to me not the tax money but this is what came to me 27.55 Cost, 50 cents. Fees, $4.13. $5.23 to ship. And I don't even think it's that much. I just put what it would cost for one pound first class. You know, less than 16 ounces. But I think it's going to be, if I get the right box, yeah, it's going to be cheaper than that. So the profits can actually be better than this. $17.69. This is a winner to me. That's profit. After all is said and done, that's a winner to me. I'm not doing Tupperware to make four bucks, but I'll definitely do it if that's the price that I can make for sure. All right, so now it's time for you old pros in here. Chip in, chime, chip in, chime in. <laughs> Tell me what you think are some keys to being successful on eBay. Stay away from the, the shipping ones right now. That's a whole different ball game. Other than shipping, you know, it's more of a, a psychological uh, viewpoint here or philosophical viewpoint as far as... Uh, what you think are keys to being successful as an eBay reseller. So anyway, I just love to hear from you. You know, I think <laughs> just a good rule of thumb is to not buy Tupperware, to not buy ashtrays, to not sell replacement backgammon pieces. <laughs> Don't do everything <laughs> that I do, please. A lot of it's not worth your time, but some of it, some of it surely is. All right, had another eBay and a man auction go out. This one's going to Dustin. And that's all headed your way. Let me read your message real quick. He says, thanks, Kevin, for the great content. Best of luck with a full time. And we hope to see the homeschool hideaway. Ah, oh, he's giving a name here because he knows that this money is going towards a new building of some sort here. And we got your name in here. Actually, I don't think I wrote yours down yet, but I'm going to in just a second here. A new cabin soon. The Honey Bee. Danielle and I will be retiring from 24 years of naval service. Wow, thank you for that service. We appreciate it. And I like the fact that he says we here, Danielle and I, will be retiring soon from 24. Does that mean that she was in the Navy too? Or does that mean that she was there to support you? 
because I know that's a difficult job too. Uh, when people are in the Navy, it's a big commitment. So at any rate, 24 years of Naval service early next year and cannot wait to join you in the full-time adventure. So luckily we are in the land of milk and honey. That means they're in California because they listen to the show. And it's not the land of milk and honey. It certainly is the land of milk and honey for resellers though. Although the prices can get high, you can find some amazing stuff out there at the moment, but we know we will need this to get things moving once we move back to the Midwest. Keep your videos coming. Dustin, CB Picker. Love it. Thank you, Dustin, and thank you, Danielle. All right, Turner has a sale out of the Homeschool Hustler store. What do you got? Um, Buddy from Secret Life of Pets. Buddy from Secret Life of Pets. Do you remember what kind of dog that is? No. No, it's a dachshund. Yep, and you know, sometimes y'all, can I see it for a second? Yeah. I like to pick this stuff up because how many dachshund keychains are out there? It doesn't even matter if there's secret life of pets, right? But if somebody has a dachshund, how many dachshund keychains are there? So I'm like, it's got to have a some kind of a market, right, bud? Yeah. Bud, see, I call you buddy. Do I call you buddy? Yeah. And he's buddy. Yeah. What do you um, think about that? What this, do you got to say? This looks like the dog, almost looks like the dog from Toy Story. Toy Story, yes. yeah. He should have the spring. Yeah. Dog, and be him. I love you, buddy. See that? I love you, buddy. <laughs> $8.95 free ship. It went to Jan, and I'm just mentioning Jan's name because I think the first three we sold were all to viewers. <laughs> but this one, I don't think it is. But if you are, Jan, thank you. All right. And um, hey, wait a minute. Nope. I forgot. You got to give your uh, little line here. It's yeah, definitely enough yeah. to do what? I, was, yeah, I just forgot that. <laughs> um, Save a dollar, spend a dollar, and donate a dollar. All right. Thank you, bud. Bye. Just a couple of sales in here. <laughs> Replacement magnetic travel backgammon pieces. I know. I said I was getting out of the business, but I got to sell out first. And then after that, I'll probably still not get out of the business. Five ninety nine free shipping. So we're making like a dollar fifty on the... <laughs> Maybe. Depends on where it's going. Let's just say we're making like a buck and a quarter. I used to say two bucks, but first class keeps going up and I never raised my price. I figured who in the right mind would pay for... I don't know. At any rate, we'll make a buck. All right, eight bucks here. So this... I talk about this often, but I haven't talked about it in a while. So I'm going to do it really, really quick so I don't bore the people who have heard it 8,000 8, times. Twisted Radio Waves, Dr. Demento, Jerry Garcia. Song, interview, song, interview, song, interview. I bought a thousand of these. And I bought them at Goodwill. They had 99 cents piece on them. I'm like, hey, can we go? You know, I talked to the manager. I'm like, this is, should be another tip how to succeed. Don't be afraid to get a better price for something. I know I get crucified on the picker channel for trying to get a deal. But, hey, you know, you can't. A lot of this stuff, you know, it ends up not working or what. You know, you got to get your cost down and control the buy side. But whatever. Here we go. This thing here, talk about controlling the buy side. 99 cents piece for a thousand, you know, even I can do that math. You know what I got them for? Five bucks a box, two boxes, 500 a piece. I paid a penny, a penny. And I, you know, I'm not making much, but it's one listing, had a thousand of them. We're literally down to, it's been years, don't get me wrong, but you know, Sometimes, like this was on uh, a sale, got caught up in a sale, which I don't often do that. But a lot of times, I mean, we've sold these things for 10 bucks a pop. So, you know, there's, we're going to make, oh, when it's all said and done, four to $6,000 on these things because of the varying different prices of sales. At the very beginning, I was selling these things for crazy money, crazy money. Like, I, I think I sold a hundred to a guy for like a thousand bucks. Um, and he had a Jerry Garcia or a, a Grateful Dead like website or Facebook group or something. I can't remember. And he probably made a ton of money off of it. But at any rate, hey, don't be afraid to ask. Even at the Goodwill, you never know. Might get a deal. Hey, Reagan's got a couple of sales on the ComeWithPicker.com store. We got Sarah got an Enemog and Tina got a gray shirt. All right, Sarah with the Enemog, Tina with the, the gray shirt. Yep. Thank you all very, very much. And... Bye. Don't forget to get your sticker at CommonwealthPicker.com. All right, y'all. <laughs> P.O. Box. You never know what you're going to find here. We got a birthday card for the Animan, and it's from Rebecca from Chesterfield, Virginia. And by the way, I loved your return address label. I can't show it because it's got your address on it, but I loved it. Enjoy your videos. When you were auctioning off the Animan calendar pages at the beginning of the year, by the way, we got more of those. I remember you mentioning that Animan has a birthday in August. 
So I'm sending his birthday card early. Hope you get some grins and giggles out of it. Uh, well, you got me to giggle. Happy birthday, Inaman. Amazing. That's very awesome. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Rebecca. And before we let you go today, just a really quick thank you to Media Picker. Th I think it's Thrifty BG or Thrift IBG or like Thrifty, but I don't, I don't know. But that's what we're going to put on our little list in here when we get the new building and dave all of you gave five pieces of a shit that's 10 bucks a piece that is unreal getting our total up oh we're well over 500 bucks already this is insane i still haven't set up the account where i'm going to put everything in there so that when we're ready to go i've got to get on the ball with that so at any rate thank you very very much and we can't wait to see you next all right, y'all, many of you don't know, but Reagan loves corny jokes. Yeah. So we got some Commonwealth yeah. comedy here. She says she wants to do one joke every time we do a sale. So, all right, what do you got for us? Do they allow loud laughing in Hawaii? Do they allow loud laughing in Hawaii? Or just aloha? <laughs> Gosh, that is pretty corny. <laughs> corny. Oh, I love it, sweetie.